I never thought that he would grow up to be a DJ. Jake was the centerpiece of the stage. He would cut that run, 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 run. We went from Run DMC and we support Joe Clark 100%. They were like superheroes to us. Breaking news, a member of Run DMC is dead. He walked right over to Jay and fired around immediately without any conversation at all. I went inside the studio, Lydia was in there on the floor crying. Tony Rukon was on the couch, shot, and Jay was on the floor dead. Gripping, suspense, mm -hmm. all of it is what you feel when you watch this award-winning documentary, a story that was important, that really needed to be told. That is even more important because of this week, the murder trial of Jam Master Jay gets underway. So, brand new headlines being made. Our Darla Miles knows everything about this. Darla, I don't even know how to start this story. It's so complex, so where do we start? So let's start from the nucleus, right? This is a local story. Even though it's national, it's global, this is Run DMC, this is a local story to Hollis, Queens. And this yes. is very insular to Hollis, Queens. It's kind of like a Cain and Abel story because you have Jam Master Jay, Jason Mizell, who was beloved in this community. He had an open door policy. And now you have two of his best friends, his godson and one of his best friends accused of murdering him mm. out of revenge and greed. So let's catch people up. This is a murder that happened 20 years ago, mm -hmm. more than 20 years ago. It was in the record studio in a very familiar, comfortable place, and he was executed. This was not sort of a stray bullet situation. This, according to prosecutors, this was a, a targeted hit. When you said that, I just, my hair stood up on, yeah. um, on my arms because uh, what is so sad about this is, Jam Master Jay's mother, his brother and sister were crusaders to find out what happened, and they passed away before even seeing this day uh, in court. Uh, his children weren't there. I mean, it, there's just been so much yeah. of a circus and chaos. But um, so we finally found out exactly what investigators believe happened, because if you look at the documentary, they're like, why? What happened? What happened? So you have uh, the two suspects, uh, Carl Jordan Jr., accused of being the shooter his godson, you have Tenard Washington, Ronald Tenard Washington. And so what we now know is the third person who was charged later, he's accused of uh, getting buzzed into the front door. So the front door, everybody can come into Jay's studio. It's Jay's studio, he's mm. the neighborhood guy. Yeah. He gets buzzed in, he goes through the back door <clears throat> and lets the uh, suspects, Jordan and Washington in. And according to prosecutors, this is what was so sad about it. They say Jordan walked up to Jam Master Jay. He greeted him and said hello and shot him in the head. Oh, he knows. I mean, he's known for it's a his long. godson. He's exactly. known since he was a child. Right. And they said he was so close to his head that it, the bullet burned the hair in his head. Oh um, and that's hard for everyone to think, say because, of course, Joel, Carl Jordan Jr.'s family is in court today. They're standing behind him. He says yeah. he didn't do it. He didn't do it. He was not the shooter. And what makes this even more complex is the narcotics trafficking case around this because this is not a state case. This is a federal case. This is a murder while conducting narcotics trafficking. So they do have Jordan and Washington on wiretaps, uh, uh, surveillance video pictures uh, in, engaged in the narcotics trafficking. So that part of the case is pretty much, is very solid from the federal prosecutor side. But now you're gonna have all of these witnesses to say that these are the two shooters. I mean, it's clear from watching your documentary that there was so much information out there. The surveillance video, the witnesses, as you mentioned, but yet something happened what was revealed to you on that first day yesterday? So what we know is that um, after jo Bryant allegedly <coughs> let Jordan and Washington in, yeah. you had five people in the studio, and this was a big question. Three of the people were actually inside of the recording booth, so they okay. did not see what happened. Then you have Tony Rincon. He was on the sofa playing video games with Jam Master Jay. Uh, and then you have Lydia High, who was the receptionist. And she took a lot of heat to the point where she had to leave town immediately. She buzzed in. Mm -hmm. Allegedly, Jay Bryant, uh, Jordan Washington comes into the back door. The, he shoots. Um, uh, Jordan allegedly shoots Jam Master Jay. Uh, Rincon is accidentally shot in the leg, and then Lydia tries to run, according to prosecutors. And then uh, Chenard Washington says, "No, you get on the floor with a gun." And these are people that they know. So these are people like who oh. live across the street. Around. They're like, exactly. so where do we go? Like, you, you know, there's just this is one of those stories where time had to like. You know, the streets will start talking after right. time, after you time. You spend so much time on this. Are, is there anything that you gathered that gave you more perspective on this story? Oh, my gosh. Um, I, I think it's the heartbreak of the Hollis Queens community. Um, yeah. It is just so hard to reconcile. I think one thing that was very difficult for people uh, 
during the time of the murder and even now is to associate someone as as, as legendary as ingenious as Jam Master Jay with, with drug trafficking. And so the way prosecutors framed it yesterday is that when the spotlight began to fade uh, on, on Run DMC and, and rap and hip-hop began to evolve, which you will see in the documentary, um, that he was still taking care of so many people because he just loved so many people. Like, again, Ronald Washington was sleeping on his sister's couch and he was taking care of so many people. And so well, they also are very were very keen to point out that he he was just kind of like a middleman, right? Yeah. He was just make phone calls, make connections, use his connections to put the dealers together. So, you know, that's what prosecutors allege. So they really have been, I think, very thoughtful and not uh, smearing his image, but mm. just kind of really trying to be re realistic about what was happening during that time. Do we know how long the trial is expected to last? Oh boy, this is going to last for about four weeks. And again, those witnesses, five, five people who have never said a single word in over 20 years will get on the stand. Oh, wow. That's oh. a big thing. Like, they haven't, they didn't talk to police. They didn't yeah. talk to friends. Like, right. There were a few people, as you'll see in the documentary, who became their <laughs> confidants and said, oh, no, this is who did it, but I'm afraid because yes. I know all of these players involved. Um, so, yeah, we're going to hear from them, and that's going to really be the big thing. Well, I encourage you to check out ABC 7 and Y, where your documentary lives right now. And I know the whole team just worked really, really hard to bring this story to light. And now we're seeing it play out in a courtroom. So. Absolutely. And one last quick thing. You know, NYPD took a lot of heat. Uh, during the time because this was a new landscape because of the stonewalling of witnesses and yesterday was a really compelling point on the stand where the first detectives the detectives on the scene said oh the theory of the crime is that the suspects came in the back door but no one took any photos or no crime scene photos of the back oh. of the building oh. they didn't even think to go to the back door oh this is where someone may have come in mm. and there's a bullet that went to a wall that was never recovered so wow. it's it's, wow. it's it's the true crime the at its in essence which the investigation yeah. was botched yeah. Potentially, you know, <clears throat> you just certainly going to raise a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, people just do the best they can at, with the information they have at the time. Darling. That's what my mom says. Well, yeah. thank you for coming Amazing. in to share the, your perspective. I know you'll be following the case uh, as you have for so long now. Mm -hmm.